Sorry, we were having some technical difficulties. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry we were having some technical difficulties. Blessings. Invite your followers. Invite your friends. Blessings. Hi from Hampton. Share on Twitter, on Facebook. Let them know I'm live. Atlanta's in the house. Welcome. <laughs> Yes, I am hype. <laughs> hey, <laughs> shout it out. Sorry, I might be a little loud. Hi from Illinois. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Welcome from Ohio. We got Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome all first timers. We welcome you. We welcome you. This is Israel Houghton. Shout it out. His covered CD alive in is Asia. <laughs> Highland, California in the house. Yes! Y'all don't even understand. You know, I'm not sure if that's the title of the song. I'm sorry. I'm just jamming right now. Thank you. Gonna wait a few moments. been quiet on most of the scopes, but I'm kind of loud. <laughs> it's an exciting, exciting, exciting day. Thank you for inviting your followers and your friends. Ha. He is fighting for us. Okay. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm going to let that go because I might not do what I'm supposed to do tonight if I keep playing that. So, <laughs> welcome everyone. I am so excited. <laughs> I am so excited that you all <laughs> that you all are here and you're joining me on tonight. Thank you, thank you for all the compliments on my shirt. Who, where do I begin? Where do I start? I see that you guys are already releasing the hearts. Um <laughs> you're already releasing the hearts. So I, for those of you who aren't friends with me on Periscope or connected with me on Twitter or Instagram, you may have missed a major announcement that I made on today that my website is finally live and you can actually find me at www. 
MashaniAllen.com. And that's M-A-S-H-A-N-I. You can find me at www.MashaniAllen.com. So that was the first announcement that I made that my website is finally, finally, finally up. You can find out more about me. You can find out more about what I do, who I am. Um, But something else exciting happened today. I got the final copy of my book. And I told you all last week that I would share with you who endorsed the book. Do you guys see that? The foreword is by Jane Hammond from Vision. (laughs) Yes, this is Jane Hammond, the daughter-in-law of Bill Hammond. And she did the foreword of my book. But I have some more endorsements as well. On the back, we have an endorsement by Apostle John Eckhart. And we also have an endorsement by Steve Pemberton. Let me start with Steve Pemberton because some of you may not know who he is. Steve Pemberton is the vice president, the the divisional vice president and chief diversity officer of Walgreens. And he wrote a book called A Chance in the world, a chance in the world. Now, I wanted to share with you how I met the people who endorsed my book. Because for those of you who have been following me on Periscopes, the topics that I've covered thus far have been the justice of a journey, one word, which is nevertheless, divine timing, gates, is this your battle, a purposed heart, the process, and trust. All of those led us to this scope on today because everything that I've taught you, I've been through myself. This is this meeting this gentleman was just an absolutely amazing divine connection. So, when I moved to California in 2012, um for those of you who've heard my testimony, Um, I moved here knowing that this is where God wanted me to be. And I actually ended up um, working in the entertainment industry for a period of time. And while I was there, I had the privilege of being asked to read this particular book for a potential project. So the industry was new to me, a lot of terminology I didn't understand, but I love to read, so I read this book. And my one of my favorite movies is Antoine Fisher. Well, this book is Antoine Fisher to the Thousandth Power because it's the story of his life growing up being adopted and all of the trials and the struggles, but also the triumphs and the victories that he's achieved. So in reading this book, I read it for my job and I had to do coverage on the book. And um, I read the book and that following Wednesday, after reading Steve Pemberton's book, A Chance in the World, that following Wednesday, I woke up with a prophetic poem for this man. I never read I never met him. I just read his book. And when I get prophecies, sometimes they're in rhyme. And his was in rhyme. So I let my boss know that I had a word for him and she sent it to him. (laughs) Yeah, he and his family were so in awe of that word. His wife said, it felt like I literally had a conversation with God about him. So we met via email through prophecy. So a month or two later, I actually got to meet him in person. I was coming out of an office and I saw him 
And I was like, Steve. And he looked up and I was like, Mashani Allen. He's like, oh, oh, oh no, you get a hug, you get a hug. So he came over and he gave me a hug and we were talking and he shared with me. He said, and I'll never forget these words for as long as I live. He said, Mashani, I've been all around the world, but I've never received a gift like this. He said, many times people speak to my past, but you spoke to my future. <laughs> so that's how I met Mr. Steve Pemberton. And um, the interesting thing is I had to spend some more time with him and we were driving and we were talking. And what was so awesome is I began to share with him about beauty of holiness. And instantly he started saying, what are we going to do? How are we going to get this book published? How are we going to do this? And I'm driving like, we, we, wow. He immediately took ownership. He immediately wanted to assist. So he gave me some advice and I'm going to share this with you. What he told me was to make sure that I do something towards the project every single day. He said, even if it's just writing one sentence, make sure you do something towards the project every single day because that will keep it alive and that will keep it in the forefront of your mind because all of us are busy and all of us can make an excuse, but you have to birth the very thing that you were put on this earth to do. So I, I followed his advice. I didn't, I can't say that I did it every day, but I did um, make a better effort of getting this book done. And this was in 2013. So um, when I finally finished the book, I sent um, him a message asking him if he would do an endorsement for the book. This was in November of 2015 that I asked if he would endorse the book. And his response was this, Hi Mashani, so great to hear from you. Um, yes, please send me along with your summary. I will be honored to endorse it for you. Um, I am thrilled for you. Reaching this milestone is no small feat. You will be amazed by the lives you touch. Um, and I asked him permission to share this testimony of how I met him. And his response was absolutely fine. The poem still sits on the shelf of my home office. So just so you can know, his endorsement of my book is right here. And what he says is this. Mashani's powerful redefinition of beauty, faith, and inner peace is a just-in-time book for anyone who quietly wonders if they are beautiful. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> wow. I immediately had tears, 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 tears when I read that endorsement. So that was one endorsement. Um, another part of getting this book done at the beginning of uh, 2015, I was talking to one of the elders and prophets um, from Crusaders Elder, um, or I call her Prophetess. Um, Antoinette Anderson, but we call her Elder Tony. Um, she um, was talking to me about momentum, and she was like, "You have to get momentum with this. It's 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 time. You have to get momentum with this." And she encouraged me to read this book that I had. It's a real small, as you can see, it's a very thin book by Apostle John Eckhart, and it's called Momentum the key to victory. So I read this and I used this as fuel to cause me to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Now, um, so when the book was done, I um, reached out to Apostle John and I asked him if he would endorse the book as well. And he said yes. So his endorsement is right here. And what Apostle John Eckhart said is this, 
Mashani Allen has written a unique book on the subject of holiness and spiritual beauty. This is not a rehash or an echo of books that have already that have been already written on this important subject. I believe God wants us to always I believe God wants to always give us a us fresh insight on important subjects. Beauty and holiness are important to God, and we need a fresh word conceding these virtues. This is why I am excited about this book. I believe it will reach a new generation with the message that they need to hear in a fresh new way. I highly recommend this book to all who want an understanding of the importance of maintaining and caring for yourself spiritually. Read it with an open heart and may you receive an impartation as you read. Again, that was the endorsement from Apostle John Eckhart, pastor of Crusaders Church um, in Chicago, Illinois. So let's get to this forward because this, I was not ready for this. <laughs> I'm so serious. I was not ready for this. Um, the way I met, uh, met um, Apostle or Prophet Jane Hammond, um, I'm a member of Regency Christian Center International in Whittier, California. And um, Prophet Jane came in uh, 2013 and 2014 and 2015. And in 20, I believe, yeah, it was in 2013 when she came and I was at the service and she was um, ministering to pastors. And in the middle of ministering to pastors, she stopped mid sentence, looked in my area. And this is when I had the big curly hair. And she was like, I want the woman with the hair. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's me. <laughs> So she spoke a powerful word over me um, that day. Um, the following year, um, Life Builder Seminars, which is um, um, led by Pastor Kathy Guerrero, um, they had a conference and Pastor Kathy asked me to be one of the speakers. I had a 10 minute spot. So um I did my 10 minutes, and when I sat down, uh, Prophet Jane Hammond looked at me, and she said, that was absolutely amazing. And I was just like, oh, wow, thank you. <laughs> so when we got a moment, um, since I was a speaker, I was at the table, and when we got a moment, I, I asked her, I said, can I, can I ask you a question? And she was like, sure. And I said, um, I wrote a book and she said, I'll endorse it. Wait, I haven't given you the title. I haven't given you the subject matter. <laughs> I literally was in awe. And she volunteered um, to... <laughs> endorse my book and that literally literally blew me away the reason why i'm sharing this part of my testimony is to show people you don't have to brown nose you don't have to step on other people you don't have to do other people dirty you live holy live holy and God will open doors and position you in places with people that you just never thought possible. So that was in 2014. And in 2015, when past, uh, Prophet Jane came to Regency, um, I had a moment to speak with her. And one thing that she said, she said, Mashani, this is the year of fulfillment. This is where my heart's at. Why nobody giving me no hearts? Is this not a good testimony? Um, <laughs> she said, this is the year of fulfillment. And I knew that meant I had to birth, I had to birth 
this. And it, it, it's come with its challenges, it's come with its hiccups, but because I refuse to let go of the momentum, this is so important. Let me, I, oh, I know I have stuff um, in here. He said, every move, this is Apostle John. He said, every move of God is designed to give you momentum for the next move. So, oh, that's why I'm not getting hearts because everyone's listening intently. <laughs> Uh, I can understand that. Um, he said also in this book that procrastination is a thief of momentum. He said, some people always dream about tomorrow without ever doing anything today. This is a really good book. And I highlighted, um, and this is another thing that he said. He said, momentum always begins with the first step, a decision. This book is only this book is only 23 pages, but it is loaded with some powerful keys. And especially if you're getting ready to begin a project, I highly recommend that you look for this book. You should be able to find it on Apostle John's um, website. Um, so um, I'm going to share with you all now. Can you see the spine? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to share with you all the forward that uh, Prophet Jane Hammond wrote for the beauty of holiness. And when I read, I read this at five o'clock in the morning. When I say I was boohoo crying. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So this is what she wrote. When I was the tender and awkward age of 12, I was a tomboy who was just discovering that I really wanted to be pretty. I was standing at the bus, bus stop at school one day when a teenage girl said to me, you're either a cute boy or an ugly girl. Which are you? I was embarrassed. No, horrified that she could not tell if I was a boy or a girl. Until that time, my outward appearance didn't really matter that much to me. However, suddenly, as I was approaching my teen years, I began to notice how beautiful some of my classmates had grown to be. I longed to be someone other, others might notice. Though I began to work hard on my appearance, it wasn't until I received Jesus as my savior at the age of 14 that my real makeover began. I found such a place in his love that gave me confidence and courage to be who I was called to be. Beauty for me began on the inside and worked its way out. Yet we hear the cry of so many women saying, I am not thin enough. I am not tall enough. I hate my nose. If I only look more like her, people would notice me. We live in a world in which airbrush pictures and magazines create an unrealistic idea of what beauty really is, causing many women to see themselves less lovely than they truly are. God's word encourages us that it is not wise nor healthy to compare ourselves to one another. Yet many women spend their lives, not to mention a great deal of money, striving to fit an ideal that only exists in their minds. This insecurity can often set women up to form unhealthy self-images, which lead to unhealthy relationships with other women and especially men. All the while, the Lord is longing to draw us to his heart, to whisper words of love, to let us know just how beautiful we can be inside and out. As our lives are filled with his glory 
and the beauty of his holiness. True beauty cannot be judged by merely looking at someone's outward appearance. True beauty is that which resonates from within, lighting one's countenance, lifting one's soul. A woman finds true beauty as she looks into the eyes of her maker, her beloved, and finds a place of unconditional love and acceptance. This love brings healing to the soul and the courage to shine as God intended. This delightful book by Mashani Allen will encourage and strengthen you to identify beautiful, to identify spiritual beauty treatments that will set you free. These beauty tips will release you to a deeper love relationship with him, healthier relationships with others, and kindness towards yourself that will increase your level of peace and joy in life. Yes, you were created to sparkle and shine as the beauty of holiness pours out of your life. Jane Hammond, Vision Church at Christian, Sen Christian International Senior Co-Pastor. <sighs> Is that not amazing? Simply amazing. And I also have two more endorsements and they are from my pastor um, in Florida, who's also my grandfather, um, Dr. Gilbert S. Smith, um, and Dr. Kathy Guerrero, of pastor of Regency Christian Center International. So, um, I've read the other three. I'll read these two as well, and then we can talk. So, my um, grandfather in Miami, Florida, wrote, this book by Mashani Allen is inspired in due season. The timing of such a treasure is immeasurable in its importance to the body of Christ. The information provided is for such a time as this, to help all of us be better prepared for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for his church. I know the author to be a truly dedicated and a sincere person in Christ. It has certainly been both a pleasure and a privilege to have mentored the author of this great work. I am grateful to God for whatever degree of influence my wife, who's also known as Honey, Geneva Oliver Smith, and I have had on her life and her spiritual development to God be the glory. May God continue to bless and prosper her in all her endeavors and her service to the body of Christ. Again, this is Dr. Gilbert S. Smith, pastor of Apostolic Revival Center in Miami, Florida. And my last endorsement comes from Dr. Kathy Guerrero, pastor at Regency Christian Center International in Whittier, California. Every woman reading this book will be profoundly impacted to be all that God has intended for her with insight, revelation, and strategy to apply in a to a, wait to apply to life in a practical way. This book is a must read for all. Knowing Mashani personally as pastor and friend, she is genuine, modeling the truth written in her book. As a woman of righteousness and integrity, she is one who not only teaches, but also lives out her convictions written. So you've been able to hear the endorsements for the beauty of holiness, a practical guide to life relationships and inner beauty. Now, today has been an interesting day because when I wrote 
or when I announced that my book was out, I started getting inboxes. I started getting emails from people wanting to know how um, how I published, how I self published. Um, I've showed, I've shared with you how I got the endorsements, but um, I gave one um, young lady some encouragement um, that I said that I would share with you all today. Um, what I told her to do was to buy a journal specifically for that book. Buy a journal specifically for that book. And as you can see right here, I have thoughts and ideas for beauty of holiness. Thoughts and ideas for beauty of holiness. And in this journal, whenever I would have a thought about a chapter, I would write it in this journal. Whenever I would have a thought about how I wanted the cover to look, I would write it in this journal. All thoughts and ideas concerning this book, I started by writing it in this journal. That was my efforts of putting something towards the book every single day. Um, that's the first step. Get the ideas out of your head and onto paper or onto a computer. Um, that's the first step in writing a book. Um, I've shared before that my journey in completing the beauty of holiness was a process. But as you all can see, it was definitely a God timing thing based on the level of endorsement that he bought to a self-published book. He did that. I didn't do that. He did that. So be okay with the process. Also, my book cover looked totally different. 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. And it changed in 2013. And at first, I didn't want to change it. But I had a conversation with an executive in the entertainment industry. And I was telling him about my book. And I showed him my business card, which had the cover of the book. And he shared with me, he said, what you shared with me and what this cover looks like I don't get that based on this cover. So I had to be okay making adjustments. So this is what the cover ended up looking like, but this was not the original cover um, of the beauty of holiness. So I'm saying all of that to say, you're going to have to be flexible. You're going to have to be open to feedback. My book was edited seven times. <laughs> I do have a, you know, me and perfectionism, you know, we're working on that. But it's, it, it's the fact that once I release this, it's released. You can't get it back. So there's a level of excellence that I want to have a company with this book and a company with everything else that was put into this book. Um... Um, another thing that I wanted to share was, um, I, like I shared with the young lady today, I said, when you write in the journal, when you write in the journal that you set aside for the book, there will be times when you will just flow on certain topics and there will be times where you may just write one sentence and that's okay. That's okay. But make sure you're writing consistently. Don't let it sit on the shelf for a month and not, not write anything. And even, even if it's writing stuff regarding the marketing of your book, any idea that you get regarding that project, put it in that one location that you can always go to. Okay. Um, my website. So I've seen a few of you comment on um, my website. That is also very key and very instrumental. It took a moment for my website to come, but now that it's up, it was done in excellence. Again, the website is www.mashaniallen.com. As an author, you have to have... Um... Hey, As an author, you have to make yourself um, um, accessible to people. 
And in this day and age, we really don't have an excuse um, because we've got all these different social media platforms. But having a website is really key. Thank you so much for all who visited. It's really key because it's, it helps you to blog um, and that helps you to get your name out again and your information can be shared. Now, I will also say this. I have done more research about self-publishing. I have been researching and researching and researching and I, I tried to go through publishers. I sent my information to um, different publishing houses, um, but that just wasn't the route that God had for me to go. Um, but I'm not saying for those of you who are working on projects, that might be the door that he opens for you. But be open to being flexible, be open to even um, hearing some things that you don't want to hear, um, especially um, when it comes to the editing process. I actually have had different types of editors. I had one editor that was considered a content editor and what her um, job was to make sure that all of the information flowed. She wasn't there to check grammar. She wasn't there to <laughs> she wasn't there to check spelling. She was there to make sure that the concept was being carried through um, the entire book, like it was being weaved through the entire book. That is a process. It's, it's it doesn't feel good when you work on a chapter, you know, for a couple of days. And someone sends it back and he's got all these red writings and question marks and you didn't fully explain this thought. And <laughs> it doesn't feel good. And your pride, you have to leave that at the door. If you're going to write a book, you can't have pride. That's just not going to work. Either that or your book isn't going to be published because you have to be okay with people being critical um, to what you've written, not in a negative way. But sometimes when, like, I've been a Christian, I've been saved for a long time. So I understand my terminology. Um, but someone who's reading my book, who's not a Christian, if I use terminology that they're not familiar with, or if I use terminology and I don't explain that terminology, that can turn them off from reading the book. And sometimes when we're so in a world or in a space um, we have to be okay stretching ourselves to explain um, even what we consider to be a basic concept because if it's a brand new world to someone, they won't, they don't know what you mean. <laughs> that terminology they're not familiar with. So you don't want to dissuade your audience from finishing the book. So you have to be comfortable with making changes. You have to be comfortable with start. I mean, it's, it's a process. That's why I did a teaching on the process and writing a book is a process. Now my next book is, I've already started that one. That one's not going to take as long. Um, getting the first one done is the hardest. Um, and after that, it's just like a river. It's just going to flow, 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 flow. But I am extremely excited. I, I have been blessed um, with a support system from all over the world <laughs> of different ones encouraging me, different ones, you know, sending me um, uplifting messages, text messages, because um, this is some people have been on this journey with me from the beginning from the beginning and I am most humbled and I am most um, honored, you know, that people believe in me the way that they do. And I don't take that lightly. Um, becoming an author isn't just about writing the book. It's something Apostle John last year spoke at a um, conference for authors. And one thing he said, when people read their book, they're not just reading words, they're reading, they're, they're getting your spirit, they're getting your impartation. Um, through these words. So you want to make sure that as you're writing this book, you have a right spirit. You know, you want to make sure that you're living whole, especially if you're writing a, a book for believers, make sure you're living holy when you're writing this book. Don't assume that, you know, you can live any kind of way and still write things that, that, that talk about God. If you do, you might, I mean, you might write the book, but it might not 
it might not be able to be as successful as you would deem for it to be. Because if you live holy and you do it, then the wind of God can get behind you. Um, and that's what you want. So while you're even in the process of putting a book or a project, whatever it may be, together, make sure your lifestyle is lining up with what you're writing. Don't let it just be words on a page. Like Apostle John said in his endorsement, let it be an impartation. You know, when people read the revelation that God has given you, don't let it just be words. So um, I'm, 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 I'm extremely excited. Um, there's some surprises in the book I'm not going to share because I don't want to give too much of the book away. But again, the book will be available directly from my website, www.mashaniallen.com. It will be available on next Saturday, January 30th. You'll be able to go directly. That is the only place you can find my book is on my website. Um, and there will be a button that will send you to an online store um, so you can be able to purchase the book. Now, I wanted to share something with you. Now, I am going to do a scope at some point on journaling. Um, because people asked at the uh, last scope that I did if I would do a scope on journaling. This is one of my prophecy journals, okay? And I, to end this scope, I wanted to end this based on a word that the Lord had given me one morning. And I'm kind of like a really particular person, so all my prophecies I write with red ink. <laughs> he spoke, so I write it in red. Um... I want to leave you all with this thought. So last week, yep, it was last week, Apostle John gave a prophetic word on a new chapter. And he mentioned how he's never really given a word about a new chapter. And I actually, um, when he said that, it reminded me that God had given me a word. Um, about a new chapter. And although this is was spoken to me, I believe it's something that will um, edify and um, uplift the body for those of who are in their right place to be able to receive this word. So this was given to me on October 6, 2015. As you've started a new journal, you've started a new chapter. Much will be released and revealed, and it will come quickly. I'm speaking in a new way, on a new scale, in new purposes. Keep moving, don't question, and don't pause. Gird up, gear up, and get ready. The fun has now begun. You will find joy in old ways and new things. Joy and laughter will be the mark of this new time. Let my joy fill you till overflow. Joy, 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 regardless of what comes, maintain my joy. Let it flow, release it, come back. Let it flow, release it to others and watch it come back to you. Laughter and joy are the mark, trademark, emblem of this new chapter. It comes from me and is filled in my presence. So, <laughs> I pray that blessed you all. <laughs> On tonight, um, did anyone have any questions for me? Before we end this scope, launching, yes, we are. <laughs> Anyone have any questions for me? Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I don't even know how I'm going to go get through work next week. I'm barely sleeping. I'm too excited to sleep. I'm trying, though, but I'm too excited. If there are no questions, I can end... Thank you so much. 
I'm going to end playing this particular song. This song I came upon in um, March of 2015. And when I heard this song, I literally dropped everything. Because it was such a strong prophetic word and song. Yes, you'll be able to purchase the books directly from the website. Um, they will um, ship it directly to you. Um, so everything will be done from the website. Um, this song is so powerful. And I pray, I pray, I pray you listen to the words. Are you ready for the best days hmm. of your life? Are you ready for the best days of your life? Are you ready for the tears of joy you'll cry? Are you ready for the tears of joy you'll cry? Are you ready for peace you've never had? Are you ready for a peace you've never had? Are you ready for your heart to be made glad? Are you ready for your heart to be made glad? Are you ready for the promise to arrive? Are you ready for the promise to arrive? It's gonna take your breath away. It's going to take your breath away and blow your mind. You'll be so amazed, you'll wonder why. You'll be so amazed, you wonder why. It's for all the times you trusted me. It's for all the times you trusted me. And all those times you've held your peace. And all those times you've held your peace. You've kept the faith. You've kept the faith. So welcome to your best So days. welcome to your best days. This is by Kevin LeVar and the CD is called Destiny. So are you all ready for the best days of your life? I know I am because everything is fabulous. <laughs> Woo! I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready for the best days of my life. <laughs> Somebody said I'm ready for my cup of coffee and beauty of holiness. <laughs> ha! This is actually the ringtone on my phone. Thank you, Dr. Noel. <laughs> I'm going to leave with this song playing Thank you Angie Oh, I can sing. <laughs> I got a little too happy. Let me read. <laughs> oh, I'm too happy. to get to my part though some of y'all might log off but that's okay I'm having my own party my book just got here <laughs> y'all gotta hear this one part though and then I'll be okay with Periscope for tonight My part coming up. Because everything is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Y'all gotta hear this part. This my part right here. Right here, right here. This part, right here. This part. So I want this room right here, this level right here. I want you to say this with me. We're gonna get a little quiet for a little second. He's gonna blow your mind. What God's about to do, he's gonna. I know it's been hard, but you gotta know. It's gonna. Do y'all feel that? He's gonna do it in 2016. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think. Thank you for those who stayed with me while I lip sync. <laughs> okay. We're going to call it a night. Thank you for joining me so much. I will be back on on Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. See you then.